Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Shizitaram Waga, and I would like to say welcome and thank you in advance um, for listening to this conversation. Especially, I would love to say um, thank you to the TEDx community and more so to the TEDx Accra community, um, especially with your concept that is around forces that actually unite. I would like to actually just speak about a few, you know, things today. However, if I could just describe myself, I would say that I'm that I'm a big fan of all things design um, in a very interesting and uh, futuristic and a sustainable way, actually. And um, I would like to actually talk about why we should actually merge African arts and human creation with high utility technology, something very simple for the sake of a future multi-use economy. The fourth industrial revolution is described as the ongoing automation of traditional manufacturing and industrial practices using modern smart technology. Furthermore, large-scale machine-to-machine communication and the Internet of Things are integrated for increased automation, improved communication and self-monitoring, and production of smart machines that can analyze and diagnose issues without the need for human intervention. This is pretty much right from Wikipedia for all of my research folks, but I think it really defines this concept quite well. However, I would like for you to pay to that very last part. Pay close attention to that without the need for human intervention. Today, there is a global campaign to enable product digitization in tandem with its sustainability. For proper context here, let us look at this from a fashion accessory and a home decor product perspective. Now, if you notice, there is a fundamental irony here where we are trying to strengthen ideologies from the past while automating out human involvement. Additionally, the recent pandemic has greatly expedited the latter by decades and led to this implementation of automation at a very global scale. So we are trying to merge the past as well as the future. And that's, uh, it, it is actually quite ironic. Now, on the other hand, trends toward a more connected world where emerging physical products to the digital landscape is one that actually cannot be stopped. These forces are actually quite strong. And um, they're actually forces that actually don't unite. They don't unite well. Now, there are many ways that this could spell doom for the African economy, and here are a few. Now, um, although the African continent has been espoused as this future manufacturing base due to its low cost of labor and arable land, I'm sure that you guys have actually all heard about this, the human capital needed is going to be quickly iterated out of the equation well before the projected positive economic impact can actually occur. And what this will simply do is essentially have robots re replace the African earning potential. Um, automation is not necessarily something that just happens solely from a Western perspective. It has a potentially huge impact, especially from an African perspective. Why? Because the sheer cost of reskilling the lay African worker at scale for a future digital world, despite the lack of infrastructure, such as an internet connection, is one that actually looks very bleak. It will be simply more cost effective to automate at that point. And this is a ruthless logical conclusion as environmental laws on the African continent at best are infantile and at worst, which is for the most part, not even existent, especially in to a capacity that is needed. Now, I personally fear for the looming thrust of automation waste and um, the potential impact that that could have to our ecosystem. The potential population unrest due to the lack of jobs for the reasons discussed above will be immense. This focus and digital platformization of most startups of the continent is creating a further divide based on access to knowledge and truly seems like a bandage rather than an actual solution, especially looking at these particular possibilities. Now, if we go back to our original question, the solution is actually merging African art with technology or African goods, cultural local goods with technology to create multi-use products. This new industry effectively merges the past with the future and it will need the skills of a handmade artisan an embedded electronics expert or someone who, who is a bit of a hobbyist in that particular field and a digital interface designer. This is an innovative unity that we can definitely find, especially in the young growing population from an African continental perspective. In a way, this is actually Afro fashion tech realized in quite an interesting way. And this is going to be a new industry um, where, you know, you can imagine a handmade African statue that doubles as a lampshade with USB ports all around it, or even a handmade raffia center table with wireless charging, especially for the new phones that are essentially 
penetrating the African market. This gets quite interesting because you could see how that creates a different kind of use and it raises the brand eye of our product. Now, in this particular kind of world, what are we going to have? Number one, we're going to have far less people who are left behind because local artisanal skills become very valuable. Number two, there will be a deeper appreciation and intense curiosity for our cultural heritage as it gains new value. Number three, the vast number of product combinations that will and can occur provides economic access to even the lowliest and skilled small medium enterprises. This, as a fourth and final rationale, is the perfect emergence of the bold future and an illustrious past. And this is going to be spearheaded by a culture, a generation of Afro thinkers. That's a term that we've created here internally. And you probably are asking yourself, what does a culture of Afro tinkerers look like? Now, a culture of Afro tinkerers sees a more relatable reason for understanding technology, especially in a very tangible way. And it educates while providing opportunity at the same time. A culture of Afro tinkerers imagines Adinkra symbols engraved in wood panel that actually surrounds a mirror, where these grooves serve as fillings for conductive metal to act as a circuit, an electrical circuit. Now, this powers LED lights embedded strategically into parts of this wood mirror interface. And what this actually gives is a beautiful twist to something that some of you find common in ring light. Now, look at that particular kind of creation. Imagine that particular kind of creation. A culture of Afro tinkerers sees art as inspiration. A culture of Afro tinkerers is where the left and the right brain works in harmony, speaking about Unite. A culture of Afro tinkerers is one that answers one of the most silent questions, at least to me in recent history. If Wakanda did exist, what would a couch look like? Hmm. A culture of Afro tinkerers sparks the curiosity to build and innovate to that particular future. A culture of Afro tinkerers is inclusive, it's fundamentally slow manufacturing and dances the fine line of custom plus bespoke while achieving scale via a diversity of multi-use products, especially truly cultural diverse of these kinds of different products. Now, a culture of Afro tinkerers creates a world where machines simply cannot compete with human ingenuity because the imperfection of humane touch becomes highly sought after. A culture of Afro tinkerers creates the mental capacity for new solutions and reduces, if not reverses, the African brain drain. And speaking of forces that actually unite, the culture of Afro tinkerers is the future and the past. It's actually balance, quite in an interesting way. Now, how can this consortium of tinkerers be achieved, structured and exported at scale? This almost starts somewhere, someplace, somehow. And currently the thought is that we create a hub and spoke method of innovation in different centers and maker spaces. Because for this to actually succeed, it fundamentally cannot be centralized. All of this will actually happen and take place in a pilot African region. Next, a handful of pre-selected smart and mostly young individuals with think tank partnerships with, with members of the African diaspora, essentially a, that is a combination of on ground talent as well as diasporic talent will begin conducting outreach to the current higher education systems within said pilot region. Internal and external hackathons are facilitated where research and development and current global products are conducted. Now this diasporic hybrid team then rapidly prototypes concepts using sustainable and natural materials to actually test. This project-based approach spurs a far more efficient goal-oriented form of learning. Ultimately, the products created can be sold within the African market, which already has a cultural affinity for said product, as well as a tech hunger to a particular degree. So this is actually absolutely perfect. Now the full pathway from conception through the different operations to the end customer will be one that, that we strive to be globally competitive. Essentially make sure that our logistics and also supply chain and just overall operations are actually one that are considered globally strong and globally sound. Now this opens the door for exports and our products and mass as we lead the way because the world hungers for this kind of authenticity. The rationale for this design consortium is still being developed. However, celebrating the semi-exclusivity of the initial set of inductees will serve as an inspiration beacon for growth.
Now, how do we have the story of cultural sustainability? As you can surmise, there are a few ways that this landscape aligns with Africa's sustainable development goals. These range from campaigns surrounding industry, innovation and infrastructure, decent work and economic growth, responsible consumption and production, including quite a few more. A very key aspect of this effort is the telling of an accessible story, an easily accessible story. And this is a means of exporting information regarding the African collective culture. A simple format wherein this can be done is simply by embedding encrypted radio frequency tags into every single product. These tags can then be tapped on, engaged with virtually with all mobile phones on the market, especially without the need for a mobile application. The, the full experience is through your browser. Now think of this as the same action that you take when you do the Android or Apple Pay. By doing this, we can ensure that end consumers can prove out the authenticity of a product without the need for a tedious third party. This innovative content medium, driven by this encrypted unique identifier, also turns a product into its own storyteller, effectively exporting ideas about the finesse of the human involvement in creation, especially from an African perspective. The possibilities for this open up incredible doors around transparency. And those in the know, imagine when we merge this with the concept of non-fungible tokens. I mean, it's boundless at that point. You are truly talking about a revolution of a particular design rationale where humane creations have a very strong and high and growing digital value. Now to the important question, what are the next steps? Well, I would rather take this off air and um, ADM, preferably via LinkedIn is best, actually. Nicely, I should keep in mind that the TEDx Accra platform enables ideas that are worth spreading. And this is all by redefining the African narrative. So at the very least, maybe what I've done is actually inspire you to actually come into the market to actually compete. The more the merrier. Because of course, you know, unity and healthy competition do actually go together. So with that being said, I implore you to let the forces unite. A couple of other thoughts are internal, but thank you for attending the crash course and its potential workings. Essentially, thank you for coming to my TEDx talk.